This week on WealthTrack, a status report on bonds, the potential risks and rewards in corporates, treasuries, and munis with two highly rated fund managers. Next on Consuelo Mac WealthTrack. Jeff Klingelhofer is a portfolio manager on several Thornburg funds, including its five-star rated limited term income fund, which uses a laddered strategy investing in bonds with staggered maturities so that a portion matures every year and is reinvested in a new issue. He also manages the four-star rated strategic income fund, which has a flexible mandate to invest anywhere in the world in any kind of income producing security. Nicholas Venditti is portfolio manager for several municipal bond funds, including the five-star Thornburg Limited Term Municipal Fund, again using a laddered portfolio, and the four-star Thornburg Strategic Municipal Income Fund, which also has a broad, flexible approach. I began the interview by asking Klingelhofer for his assessment of the overall state of the bond market. How expensive is it? You know, I think for investors, honestly, if you were to paint the entire fixed income universe with a broad brush, it's pretty expensive, right? Investors just aren't being paid to take a lot of risk these days. So while securities are priced nearly to perfection, there's still a lot of risk out there in the world, right? We have a lot of geopolitical risk with whether it be China slowing down or North Korea issues. Um, we have questions over how the U.S. is actually performing at this point. We are printing kind of one and a half to two percent GDP growth, and that might be about the best that we can get in today's environment. So you know, one sector we have liked has been the U.S. consumer, but even within the U.S. consumer sector, right, credit card delinquencies are beginning to tick up, mm -hmm. auto loan delinquencies are beginning to tick up. There is some signs of wage growth, but the U.S. consumer perhaps isn't quite as uh, on the ups, upturn as, as a lot of investors believe. So yields have come down, income has come down, and at the end of the day, the asymmetric return of fixed income really means that investors are having to take a lot of risk in search of that very marginal incremental piece of yield. And, and how does the municipal bond market fit into this, Nick? Is, is it kind of a, a universe unto itself with municipal issuers, or is, is it affected by the, the trends that Jeff is talking about? Well, to some extent, the municipal bond market holds kind of a, a special place in, in the investment universe. Right. But a lot of the trends that, that Jeff has mentioned are flowing over. Uh, valuations don't look very attractive. If you think about it kind of from a 35,000 foot level, we're, we're fixed income portfolio managers, mm -hmm. right? Basically, we have two levers we can pull to try to juice returns. We can do credit. Hey, let's take a bunch of credit risk and try mm -hmm. to get the yield of our portfolios up. The problem with that is that credit spreads in, in both our markets are basically as tight as they've ever been. So, and, and, and that means that the difference in yields between very high quality bonds and, and, and lower quality bonds is very narrow. So you're exactly. not getting a lot more to buy riskier bonds. You're not being paid to Exactly. So okay. again, if you, if you aren't being compensated for that right. risk, then probably you shouldn't be taking it. The other lever we have is, is obviously duration. We can buy longer bonds and try to get more income that way. Right. The problem we have with, with sort of that is that absolute yields, even after the run-up we, we saw after the Trump election, are still, relative to any recent long-dated history, really low. You knock inflation off of that, get real yields, and they're, they're even worse. And so investors really aren't being compensated to buy 10-year bonds as opposed to nine, or nine as opposed to eight. And again, why take that risk when you're not being adequately compensated for it? And what about high yield bonds, which also have, have been terrific performers over the last several years, which I think uh, Larry Summers called uh, equity and drag. What, what's your view about the high yield space? Yeah, if I had to paint, again, any space of fixed income with a broad brush, unfortunately, high yield today is actually relatively low yield and very uh, expensively priced. Right. Um, you know, we, we are willing to, to roll up our sleeves and, and do a lot of deep dive uh, diligence and fundamental valuation. And there are some pockets that do look interesting to us, but broadly across the board, it, it's pretty expensive. And what are the pockets? So where are you investing given the very expensive and risky market? If I had to kind of classify what the Thornburg Strategic Income Fund looks like today, it would be defensive, focused on consumer, less cyclical spaces of the consumer space, mm -hmm. kind of defensive carry, defensive income. Um, we continue to hold a relatively high balance of cash to allow us to be opportunistic when and if the market does turn and reinvest that cash into a, a more attractive market in the future. And strategic uh, income in the municipal space, what, you, know, I mean, you can't have the kind of flexibility that Jeff does. 
right, right? I mean, you've got to be in muni municipals. So sure. So, so let me tell you about why I like Thornburg Strategic Muni Fund by telling you why I hate municipal high yield. I think that's the best way to sort of get All right. there. You're absolutely right. The municipal high yield market is nowhere near as diversified as the market that Jeff gets to play in every day. In fact, if you look at some of the major indexes sort of as a proxy for the high yield market, 80, 80% of the income in those indexes historically has come from two things, Puerto Rico okay. and tobacco. Wow. So just by virtue of that, you know there's no diversification. And right. both of those issuers, in my mind at least, are going to default. So they're beyond high yield and do something else. Throw that away. Let's say I'm a, a hypothetical high yield municipal bond manager who has managed to avoid Puerto Rico and tobacco entirely. I've bought single site hospitals, dirt deals in Florida, charter schools, whatever. I've had an unbelievable track record for the last couple of years. Here's my problem even knowing that. By prospectus, as this hypothetical high yield manager, I am forced to take at least 50 cents of every dollar that comes into my portfolio and invest it in low investment grade or non-investment grade credits. Mm. We talked about how credit spreads, the incremental yield I get from buying triple Bs as opposed to triple As, are as tight as they've ever been. Which means as this hypothetical high yield manager, I am forced to buy the worst stuff at the most expensive it's ever been, and that seems like a terrible, terrible investment strategy to me. Right, so where, where are you investing? So that Therefore. fund, again, it looks much, much lower on its risk spectrum. Mm -hmm. A fund that can go up to 50% below investment grade is running at about 2% below investment grade. Wow. If I'm not getting paid to take the risk, yes, you're not don't do take it. the risk. Right. I, I, think, I think the mistakes that people are likely to make in this market are stretching too far. Right. Are getting way, way, way outside of their risk bubble, searching for that extra five, that extra 10 basis points. Which has worked, actually, so far. It, it, it really it has. So has. it's really difficult if you are a responsible manager um, who doesn't want to lose principal to not go that route. It, it, right? it absolutely is. Look, yes. the, the key word is discipline. Mm -hmm. we, we believe that, again, that valuations are divorced from prices. Right. And you have to have the discipline to do the, the boring, the unsexy thing, because in the long run, we feel like that's going to be the right thing to do.